while the OS community was here at COE, Peppy was busy making OS exist. My air conditioning goes into like a sleep mode if there's no movement. And legitimately, he was busy. Laser had five releases over the last few weeks, which mainly focused on making the new daily challenge feel as good as possible. To start, look at the new intro. Uh, this was suggested by a user. It's like, yeah, why didn't we do this from the beginning? The daily challenge will now automatically download during the intro. This requires that you have the automatically download setting turned on. The default for that setting actually used to be off. As of this release, it will default to on. That does mean that if you had laser installed previously, you may need to go in and toggle it on in settings. Day one of the daily challenge featured a 3.42 star hard difficulty, mapped by me, thanks for playing, and there was an obvious problem. Everyone assessed the map. That's why this new free mods button was added by day two. People can play with whatever mods they can handle, so daily challenge actually has competition. And if you want to copy someone's mods, like whatever this person did, that can now be done by just right clicking. Same goes for the normal leaderboards. The chat room in Daily Challenge had a slight redesign too. Previously, names would be cut off and timestamps would take up a lot of space. Not so much anymore. And for the popular people out there, be gone! messages that mention your username will now be clearly highlighted. Also, a couple Daily Challenge notifications were recently added too. First, when a Daily Challenge ends, you'll see this. Then when the next one opens, five minutes after the last one closed, you'll see this. Yeah, it turns out that when you logged in, you would always get a notification saying that the daily challenge was live. We didn't actually intend for that to be the case. It was supposed to only show up when you were already logged in and the daily challenge came online at that point. And of course, these info sections on daily challenge improve too. Like this area will only update while you're on the screen. So you'll usually see a burst of updates after you finish the map. There's also now a highlight for where you've scored. There's some tool tips to make it clear what these columns mean. And the new tab was added for total passes and total score. Like we do want to add an actual daily community goal where as a group you need to complete some kind of statistical goal. Uh, but until we get those in, this was just a way to give more insight into how people are engaging with the system and how many people are engaging with the system. Uh, I just wanted to make the daily challenge screened as interactive in real time as possible. And this is another step in that direction. How do you feel about like the amount of people playing each daily challenge? Uh, let me check today's. Today might not be a good example. This map's really hard. Yeah, yeah, it's still it's still popping off. I think on the first day we did get almost ten thousand, but yeah, on the, on the easier days we are seeing five to eight thousand users still, which is pretty cool to see. Double time and half time rate adjustment is one of the biggest draws for laser, but until now. It's kind of been broken. This was discovered thanks to a change in the last major update, actually, where you could properly slow down the editor. Laser sounded a lot more distorted than stable. So Alabambi complained about it on GitHub and soon after figured out that there was just a bug in Laser for the last eight years. Back in Stable's code, I had some specific parameters to make the tempo um, shifting, the scaling of the tempo sound much better than the default settings. And we copied that code across to Laser, but applied it to the wrong stream and no one noticed it until now. Some people have been complaining that the audio offset felt incorrect when half time or double time was applied. This might help with that, unconfirmed. And yes, this means low playback speeds in the editor are finally useful, for real this time. Audio libraries can cause more problems than just that though. A few videos ago, we talked about a bug where the game somehow skips backwards one frame and how the devs just couldn't figure out a solution for it. Frenzybyte was able to reproduce this. He's been playing a lot more seriously recently since daily challenges started. And he looked into it further and found out that it is actually the audio library we're using at fault, none of our own code. And I kind of suspected this because I did so much investigation and didn't find anything definitive. So in a last ditch attempt to fix this, we've updated the audio library to the latest version, hoping that it was a bug which has already been fixed. <laughs> Making the editor not suck has been a well-appreciated trend in recent laser updates, and it's not stopping today. The upper timeline in particular had a lot of work done. Like, the auto-scroll will be a lot more gradual when selecting objects like this. Before, it was hard to control and sometimes didn't work in full screen. 
Hit sound changes will now apply correctly across selected objects. Break times will no longer generate where an object is visible. Breaks will also no longer cover objects. And as of today, timing points will always show in the timing tab, regardless of whether this setting is used. Then on the right side here, you can now see object inspector stats while you're placing an object. And these position decimal points will actually be saved. It turned out that we weren't saving it properly, or rather the next time the VMF was being loaded, it was truncating the floating point portion. So that's been fixed now. And the decimal coordinates are applied to gameplay too, right? Editor and gameplay and exports, as long as you export as OLZ. If you export to OSZ, like the compatibility mode, it will truncate still for stable compatibility. This has bigger consequences than you might think. Like, okay, in stable, for example, a stream like this can never be a perfectly straight line. As soon as you move the objects, yeah, it's misaligned. It just, it just falls apart. Or another example, you make a slider underneath another slider. It looks fine here, but you exit the map, reload it, and it's slightly misaligned. As of today, both of these examples are non-issues in laser. So while at COE, I talked with a lot of mappers, and one of the biggest gripes they have about the laser editor is deleting objects. Right click would do it in stable, but that brings up a menu in laser. This change might fix everything though. So all the people that are missing the right mouse button deletion, middle mouse now works. I think middle mouse is a much better choice and hopefully people can rebuild their muscle memory around this. Middle mouse closes tabs in browsers and stuff. So I think it's a pretty natural operation. That should be okay. The legacy skin key counter was finally added. It can be skinned with the usual skin files, but keep in mind that laser logs inputs differently. There are only three keys here, so certain designs just won't make sense anymore. It's kind of sad though, because there's like some kind of humanity you get from seeing whether someone's clicking with keyboard or mouse. Peppy, please fix. As for other skin stuff, there's also an option to disable the time text from this progress bar. It's in the skin editor settings here and the combo element was moved to the rule set skin layer. And the reason for doing this is to allow us to move combo counters for specific rule sets to the more correct place. So that is um, in Osmania, putting it inside the play field. Oh yeah, so the mute button is now inside the master volume circle. I kind of just best efforted this. We don't really have a design for it. So this is more just about moving the mute button to somewhere which you could see it and also somewhere which wasn't overlapping the back button because a lot of people were finding that they would adjust the volume then go to click back and it would click the mute button instead. I, I didn't even know there was a mute button before. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was very incognito. We all know scrolling changes volume, but you know, sometimes it shouldn't. Like in mod select, it's a lot more intuitive to move through mods when scrolling in the empty space here. So that's how it works now. And the customize section feels much better to use. Now you can just hover your cursor over the customize button to see the contents. This is huge for me. It also just feels natural. It's like what you would expect it to do. That button will also flash when it becomes available now, just to give a bit of visual hinting that there are settings to customize. And I think that's pretty much it.